Ah, can you feel that summer sun? That can only mean it's time to go thrifting near the seaside. Chroma, the gem of the Norfolk coast, and the town I grew up in is our first destination. And as we pass Gerald's on the right, the place I bought many a toy in my infantile years, I should mention that other than visiting my parents, the main reason I'm here is because of Adam Clark. Now, Adam is from Australia, but for some crazy reason is currently on holiday in my hometown. But thankfully, he doesn't seem anything like a stalker. In fact, he emailed to inform me about a box of Spectrum games found in a second-hand shop. So, I'll be needing some money then. And right across the street is the shop in question, called Much Binding. And gosh darn it, look at all those glorious things. This Alien 3 video and collector's watch set particularly caught my eye. And right in the door, oh, there's a date for your diary. Just as described, I find a box of Spectrum games. Now, according to the shop owner, a local chap recently passed away, and he managed to obtain his entire garaged collection of film and gaming memorabilia. Along with that massive 30 game pack, there's butt ugly Martians on VHS. I almost grabbed Tintin on the Spectrum and Stir Crazy featuring Bobo, both in excellent condition, but I actually grabbed some other games which are not shown here. I'll show you what they are later in the video. Now, books are clearly the anchor point of this shop, and rather splendidly, there was a collection of Sinclair magazines, including this marvellous poster. I love it. I grabbed a few of these along with some other bits and began my path to visit the charity shops of Chroma. Now, there's something about the faded boxes in small town toy shops which fills me with glee. Save for a few modern day incarnations, this shop window just feels like it could have been taken straight from the 1980s. Wandering down the street, I see what used to be my favourite video and game shop on the right hand side. Now some kind of gift emporium. Iceland on the left, where once the fabulous Woolworth stood, and then a row of charity shops which seem unchanged through the ages. Inside we find DVDs, endless DVDs, along with the usual bric-a-brac and the mandatory Frankenstein's monster on a t-shirt setup. Next door, we find more DVDs. It's clear what the people of Chroma do these days, or at least did. It looks like they've given all their DVDs away now. High-speed internet must have finally arrived. There's a Tracy Beaker set and even a couple of classic board games. But I have these. Over on the other wall, I find an upsettingly empty beer stash. I presume the beer must have dashed from this stash. <laughs> you piece of sugar! Next up, down Garden Street, is an RSPCA outlet. A few PC CD games here, Sitting Ducks, which I haven't played, and a budget Hitman release, but I'm not a huge fan of these small cases. This rise and fall of WCW looked compelling. I always found the WWF-WCW rivalry fascinating in the early 90s. Even further up top, there was this Golden Balls board game. Remember that with Jasper Carrot? Right, Catherine, Mark, Natalie, Dave, look at your back balls now. <laughs> anyway, upstairs, I was promised electrical goods and glory. Sadly, all I found was a mirror to look into, but at least you can see how I film these videos. I just carry around a little Polaroid cube, which for the most part goes unnoticed. So, on to Chroma's final charity shop destination, Break. And what's this I see? An old Philips cassette deck. Wow, what a piece of shiny glory. If you watch LGR's thrift videos, you often see a lot of wood grain effect goods, and that didn't really happen for us. We went more down the Japanese route with shiny items like this. Just look at that level meter, it's so tantalizing. But this apparently needed some work. It was probably just a rubber band for the drive, but nah, I, I passed. 
This boxed Airfix starter kit looked pretty nice though, I've always wanted a Jaguar XJS, but good god, there's so many warnings on the back, it put me off. For sick tig. There was also this little sharp organiser thing which didn't exude enough charisma for me to consider purchasing. So we make our way back to Norwich and visit what I like to refer to as the lower triple of shops, being as there's another triple but these ones are lower, in terms of mapping at least. Anyway, digression is the burden of the devil, so inside Relate, I was mildly satisfied enough to find some Wii Maracas which offered shake, rattle and roll opportunities. My satisfaction quickly turned sour and they were returned to the shelf. But what have we here? Strip tees. Strip tees. Oh, I get it, they're golf tees but in the guise of naked, headless women. I guess the ball becomes a massively oversized head. Oh, you golfers. You are crazy. Next, Children's Society. Reasonable selection of small box games here. Spore is always a keeper. City Life is always something I've never heard of, but was intrigued enough to get to know it in the form of a purchase. The last triple shop yielded Things, a Model 8 set which looked decidedly 80s enough to warrant purchase, and Atmosphere 2. I love the Atmosphere board games and this one is definitely coming home. I also found this family tree maker which looked bizarre enough for me to buy because I just love old bizarre PC software. In fact I probably have more fun with this kind of thing than playing actual games. The next stop, Heal, an animal charity, is quickly becoming my favourite haunt. Not because of the half naked blokes gathering outside, but because there seems to be a constant flow of interesting PC software here. We've got various iterations of The Sims, a Windows copy of Lemmings which I'm sure I found a copy of in my last episode as well. Over near the counter was this Usborne book which reminds me of a detective Usborne book I have in the same series, and because I cannot abstain from nostalgic memories, I decided to part with 20 pence for it. Also, check out this Smith Corona electronic typewriter, complete with sealed ink cartridge. I love this era when electronic typewriters came head to head with PCs in terms of print quality and cost, and for that reason £5 is £5 well spent in my book. Alright, on to some shops north of the city. First, Children's Hospices. Hos hospices, yeah. A regular guest on GBR Thrifts, and holding a rather spanking looking football table next to what appears to be Action Man having a whole heap of fun. Yeah, I'll just put him back there and I'll, I'll leave him to it. Games, none really of interest here. Keyboards, none really of interest here. A red dot sale, but nothing with a red dot on of interest. I might have grabbed this flatbed scanner because I love Epson flatbed scanners. Yeah, some kind of fetish, I think. But yeah, I didn't. Next door we find Splatterface. I'm pretty sure I watched a video with the same title the other day. Pretty much ended like that as well. Ah, look at this, a microwave menu cookbook. I remember there were so many of these in the 80s when microwaves were the radioactive devices of choice for cooking. To be fair, those dishes look quite good, but I bet they were cooked by an oven. Check out this Sonic Zoomers game, they've lifted the Sonic font directly from Sonic the Hedgehog, didn't even try to hide it. Other than that it just looks like a fun disc firing game but far too modern for my tastes. We also have a Who Am I, which is a guess who knockoff, filled with comical faces that wouldn't look out of place in a horror film, and what's this in the window, an old style BT telephone. Man, this thing brings back memories. Not bad for £4. Also not bad is this keyboard for the Nintendo Wii, or should I say, Powerboard. Ideal for gaming and online. Well, I guess I'll be having that then, as I love gaming and online. Behind this ionizer, I also located a very vintage Uni Ross battery charger. I remember having one of these pretty much on round the clock for my radio controlled car in the late 80s. Some lovely yellowing going on there as well, very nice. 
Alright, so here's the bit I bought from that shop in Chroma which I didn't capture on film. The reason being that I actually went in twice, but the first time I didn't have my camera. Looking forward to reviewing Lost in LA for the PC and Doom Dark's Revenge on the Specky. Also I grabbed these Corgi Red Dwarf models because I've never seen them before and I'm a big fan. Also, the Terminator 2 box for the PC actually contained a load of cover discs, a Hero Quest manual, and Wishbrigger. I'm not sure how I feel about that exactly. But anyway, that's the haul for this episode. With those additional bits, the total spend was £80, although that Red Dwarf set was £30 alone. So overall, not too bad. Stay tuned for more in-depth features on some of these, otherwise happy bargain hunting, and I'll see you in the next episode. If you want more thrifting, then here's a video for you. There's also a subscribe button and a Patreon button if you want to support what I do. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and have a great evening.